Hello and welcome everybody back to Civilization Channel. Me and Ben are here. Yeah. Uh, today we're going to look at a game that was a formative memory of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Sid Meier's Colonization. Ooh. Okay. I never played it. <laughs> I've played looks, it for like 12 years. Looks amazing. You've played it for six minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I just checked it worked. And well, well, hopefully <laughs> right. it will, will hold together. DOS box, you have to have your fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so this is a very old game. Oh, man. I don't even rem remember that logo. Like, they must have changed the logo before I started playing Micro Pros Labs. This is a very, very old... The Micro Pros Design oh. Group. It's like a bunch of old men with beards, you know. You can <laughs> yeah. imagine them coding, like... They're probably like three guys made it or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Sid Meier's... I guess it is Sid Meier's colonization. Yeah, it's the name. Oh, well, he puts his name on things, doesn't he? It's weird. Like, you always know if it's a Sid Meier's oh. game. He'll tell you. Oh, look at this. We're sailing. We're going from the it's old... It's one of these old world to the new. maps. Man, this is like something out of r slash map porn. <laughs> I love these old maps. Look, with the... With the, the monsters. Cart Microprose, 1994. <laughs> game design. Wow. There we go. So, Brian Reynolds and Sid Meier... Jeff Briggs and Douglas Kaufman. Programming Ooh. by, let's see how many guys, Brian Reynolds. He just, yeah, they told One him what guy. he wanted and he, he just made One it happen. Guy. <laughs> um, computer uh. graphics <laughs> by, that, that's what we're calling them, Barbara Bentz Miller and Stacey Clark, Charlie Shedzer, Bob Kathman, they, they made all the pixel art. Oh, loads of. Yeah, one, one person per pixel. So look at this. So this is the game that I played mm -hmm. around my friend's house, okay? Right. When I was, like, young. So mm -hmm. this was 1994 this came out. I must have been yeah, 11 or 12. 11. Yeah. Summer holidays. I'd cycle around to my friend's house super fast and watch him play this all day. Oh, wow. And, um, man, it was definitely formative. It was the first real PC gaming that I was involved in. Mm -hmm. And I remember this game being very, very, very tough. Uh, yeah. Even for an 11 year old <laughs> even for a mighty you had nothing year old. Else, you had no other games <laughs> nothing else to do yeah. we played this for weeks um, oh man but I mean like I said it was a long time ago so this is what sparked your love for history strategy gaming well this is about colonising the new world so, mm -hmm. so Civilization came out I didn't really play it I didn't really know what it was this came out then and I think it did okay and then there was Civ 2 which was very famous Civ 3 yeah uh, yeah, I, I started on Civ 2. <laughs> the music! I missed out on this. <laughs> oh this, shit. This wondrous... Colonization! <laughs> right, flags! We can bring you flags. It's ours now. So, so this music, right? Mm. It's good, right? It's... I, I mean, sure. I mean, I mean, it doesn't feel era appropriate, but... Oh, good. Well, we're playing with the 95 update. That's important. Oh, version 3.0. So I wonder what they changed. Hopefully they got rid of all those exploits. We're never going to know. <laughs> those OP hacks. So we're going to start a game in the new world, which generates okay. a random new world. That's right. the way to play games, okay? Yeah. If you don't know out there. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, we just we know where all the good stuff is if it's yeah. real map. Oh, that doesn't look good, does it? Uh, that looks... That looks... Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, sweet. <laughs> the, the, there was a little bit of a bug there. Yeah. We're, we're not going to worry about that. The, the DOS box gods give us, and the, the DOS box god give take it away. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This is a computer that's probably 10,000 times faster than the one I was using back then. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's got all this extra processing power, and occasionally it splurges it out. So difficulty setting. Oh, should we be a conquistador? We should be a, a viceroy, I think. Really? Well, you, you, this is you very got the easy. Pro I don't know if this is easy. I don't think I ever complete this game. Actually, I don't think okay. I ever actually won the game right. when I played. It yeah. was very, very hard to win. I don't know if we played in the easiest, but I think I should now play on the toughest. Because you, do you remember how to play? I reckon not really, but I reckon my thirty-three-year-old brain is better than my eleven-year-old brain. I reckon. Well, listen. Here's one. Well, oh, they say that like after you're about twenty or twenty-one, your brain stops growing and just starts deteriorating right. from that point. Like, we have peaked as far as our brains go, apparently. I know that Vice... I do know that this that setting is actually extremely hard. Okay. So we're going to go with it. Um, wow. And then we get to pick who we're going to be. So, okay, I remember from this that... I, all I remember is that the Netherlands start with a better ship. Right, okay. England, I think, get more immigrants... Right. Uh, France get... <laughs> wow, they were so ahead of their time. Back the, I think the natives are less angry with France. Oh, okay. And I think Spanish want to kill all the natives. Right. Let's what, be Spain. You want to kill all the natives? Well, I just... I play a lot of war games. I understand, I know how to kill people in computer games. Oh, but this... this this. Oh, do you want to go with Spain? Oh, no. I, I'm, I'm easy. Do we want to go... <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind Do we, we want to kill all of the natives and take all their treasure? Or do we want to trade with the natives, make them their friends, and convert them to our religion? 
Mm. Well, if we trade with them, we get to tell them that we have magic beads. And then they can give us all their stuff for like a handful of magic beads. I think we should I think we should trade with them. I think killing them all and taking all their loot yeah. is a thing you can do. Right. We're, well, gonna, we're not going to. What, okay. Who are we going to play as? We're, so the we're, um, we're the Dutch. So we're going to be Cormit. Cormit. Cormit der Frag. Der Frag. <laughs> the Great Explorer. <laughs> yeah. In, in honor, in uh, memory of our beloved uh, Dutch members. I yeah. Was. So the Protestant Dutch provinces gained their independence mm. from Catholic Spain during the Age of Expansion. A maritime country of fishermen and merchants, the Dutch Netherlands operated large merchant and fishing fleets in the North Sea and the Baltic. Mm. Upon achieving political independence in the early 17th century, this tiny nation found itself ideally poised to expand its overseas trade into lucrative new markets in the Far East and the New World. Unlike their rivals and the enemies, the Spanish, French and English, the Dutch were ruled by the merchant class. This unique arrangement led them to focus all aspects of state diplomatic, military and economic policy around the interests of trade. Mm. Their strategy proved quite successful and the Dutch economy and merchant fleet expanded so rapidly that other European powers felt compelled to take drastic measures against the Dutch. Shit. So, so, so we might get attacked by the other Europeans. Very wordy, but basically... No, oh, the Dutch trade guild. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, to represent the strength of the Dutch economy, as well as the Dutch cheapest in shipping, commerce, and banking, you get a bonus when trading with Amsterdam. Right. They don't collapse as quickly. Mm -hmm. And you get a bow. Sweet. So, you have a little, it's 1492. Right. This is an awkward typeface to read, isn't it? For the greater glory of the Netherlands, we dub the Viceroy of the New World. Go and explore this new land. Sweet. Now this is this is the music I remember. <laughs> it's a little bit more. Wow. It's a little bit more more pixelated than I remember. So this is uh, this is this is Amsterdam, mm -hmm. an expedition led by the great viceroy, <laughs> Cormit der Frank. <laughs> Do not worry about this. This is all just intro stuff. This isn't the game. Okay. This is just. It takes a long time. To, I so can't skip this. This, this either, is the sweet cinematic cutscene before we get the terrible English graphics. This is graphics, the build right? up. Yeah, yeah. To the bad. <laughs> the bad in game graphics. So this is the bad in game music. <laughs> so there you go. There's, there's Holland. Okay. There's a guy pushing our boat out. Yeah. It's we're, a, we're saying goodbye to the windmills and the tulips. Yeah. We may never see their like again. Well, no, we will because we're going to take loads of stuff back to them all the time. Oh, okay. So the idea of colonization is to colonize the new world. Yes. And eventually, mm -hmm. spoilers, consider independence. Ooh. We can be Americans. Which is which is difficult. Which is really difficult to pull off. Okay. Um, because you know it was the, the you know the Revolutionary War of Independence was a it was a big deal. Was a big deal. But that was so. How many? This game lasts a long time then, because it's like fourteen hundred and something. It's fourteen ninety two. Yeah. And what American Independence was like eighteen something. Yeah, it wasn't for a little while. Uh, a bit earlier than that, I think. Yeah, I think you. Get oh yeah, no, it was right at the end of seventeen. I, I, wow, my dates are well off. We don't, we're not American. We don't talk. We don't get taught. <laughs> no, they don't teach us American history. They, they, well, they don't teach us about the wars we lost. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. We only get taught about the wars we won. So, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> so this is our merchantman. Okay. So uh, is the light blue what we've explored? I guess. No, that light blue. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, this is uh, the rest of it's fog of war. <gasps> Discovery! Land ho! What are we going to call this new land? Um, what did they call the, the new land for... Because it, well, it was New England where the English landed, right? Yeah, I don't know what the Dutch... Because uh, New, New York used to be called New Amsterdam, didn't it? Before it... Became... Well, you'll see, because it will name the city's ah, stuff that were colonies. Nice. Um, we're going to call it... Should we it call it Nether Netherland? Netherland. Ne Nether Netherland. <laughs> yeah. So good, they named it twice. Right, so that's a fish there. Okay, I'll and take your word for it. an Indian village. <laughs> okay. So what we don't want to do first of is all is... Is that really a fish? A ...find a suitable landing place. Now, this is right. as good as any. So we're going to make landfall here. Okay. And immediately, uh, there is an Indian village right there. Hey. Well, these guys look like Mayans or Incans or something. They're the they? Arawak. Uh, they would like us to live in peace with them. I'm going to go, sure. Sure. Uh, and we're going to smoke, smoke the peace, a peace pipe. pipe. Nice. They would like us to visit their villages to share knowledge and trade with them. 
Okay, now... Okay. So what have we got for units? What are uh, we start with a pioneer, a hardy, uh, is he a hardy, just a normal pioneer. Right. He has tools. He can plow and stuff. He's a worker. Okay, can he start like a, a town or something? Or a yeah, anyone post? can start a town. And this is a colonist okay. here. He is a soldier. He's not a veteran soldier or a master soldier. He's okay. just a, a colonist with guns. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to settle. Actually, do you know what? This, is, this isn't this is worst. What's, not, what's that... Um, thing that the grey rocks that is minerals okay on a rainforest this isn't is this not a good start mm, but not, we're playing on viceroy so does great. that give us a worse start because we're playing on superhuman difficulty maybe this is better over here so can the boat just keep moving forever no it's got a limited amount of turns oh okay so it doesn't have the end turn sort of ends automatically when you stop Move doing stuff units. right but it's not great because it's an old version hmm and okay. how long's a turn? Is it like a, a season or like a month? It says spring 1494. Oh, well, the, the action music has begun already. Okay, I'm just, <laughs> sorry. So where do we begin? Right. So okay, I'm going to found a city here. And now you can found cities with any of your colonists. This right. just happens to be a colonist who is um, got muskets. So does that use the unit up? No, he's now in it. Right. So I could take him back out if I wanted to. And does to. that make the town disappear? Yep, I could make him back into a soldier and that would abandon the town. Right. Uh, so again, no. That would be folly! <laughs> yes, it is God's will. So um, he is currently assigned oh, to this cool. tile. Right. And he's, oh, so working he's working the minerals. The minerals. He's getting one silver off of it. Right, and four lumber, four ore. So I could pick what I wanted food. to work on this tile. So I could say work four ore on the tile or ah, four lumber on the tile. Right. But I can also... If I see this one's one out of two furs, okay. Because so we that means that if I move him to a different tile, right, it, it will have more fertility on that tile. Okay, but silver sounds great. That's valuable. People like silver, silver is valuable, but we're only getting one out of it at the moment. So I feel like if we get some ore first of all, that might be might be more productive. Okay. So these materials we're mining, do they um are they all for sending back home for money, or do we need some of them to like build up our town and stuff? Hmm. What's up? What's our plan? Good, good questions. So first of all, as you can see, these two tiles here are Indian claim tiles. Right. So I can't even work them at all. Okay. Uh, there's a wetland forest on this tile. Mm -hmm. uh, if I clear it, it will become marsh, which is good for ore. <laughs> not much, not much better. Hang on, let's just. Shall we look up what marsh is? So okay, I'm just looking at the terrain here. So marsh will allow us to grow some tobacco, maybe and get some ore. So mm -hmm. that might not be the worst thing in the world. And also, it's not terrible for food. So what we're going to do is, we're going to move our pioneer onto him. We're going to plow mm -hmm. the land where you... Actually, we're not. I'm going to... All right, now we have... Okay. We're, <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff happening. Right. Uh, let me see. So this this is basically like a, a civic or policy choice. Um, so once Peter Minuit joins the Continental Congress, the Indians no longer demand payment for the land. So... He's actually a pretty good, um, okay. So he's a pretty good founding us... father. Right. The other choices I have is this guy who increases my fur trappers. Mm -hmm. I can go with this guy who defends your colonies a bit better. Mm -hmm. Paul Revere, do you remember him? Oh yeah. Thomas Jefferson, obviously, you know, great U.S. statesman, framer of the Constitution. Oh. He increases Liberty Bell production, which is pretty big, actually. Okay. He's a pretty big one. This all sounds like stuff we're not going to need for a very long time. And Jean de Brebeuf. So he allows all my missionaries to function as experts. So these are all okay. I'm going to go with Peter Minuit because I already have two tiles that I want to get from the yeah, Indians. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have to worry about defending ourselves for ages. But is that it forever? We're never going to get another one of those bonuses? Oh, no, we will eventually. Okay. But it takes some time. So we're going to move to here... And we're going to build a road on that tile because that, I remember that increases your production. Anyway, let's um, let's send these guys back to town and we'll build a road. Good. Okay. It's all it's all happening, Ben. Yeah, and it's still spring as well, so I, time moves quite slowly. So nothing much is going to happen right now. Mm -hmm. Ah, until oh. religious unrest in the Netherlands. Now this comes from. So does that mean they're all going to come here? fleeing religious persecution. That's the idea, yeah. So, um, these are liberty... So, when I've settled this colony, mm -hmm. these it also generates one cross and one liberty bell. Right. Liberty bells increase this thing here, which is your independence. Your independence right. Because I'm playing on a hard difficulty, I can't yeah. quite remember how many guys I can have before I get production penalty, but if I have right. too many what's called Tories yeah. in my town, um, they all get a production penalty and everything goes horribly wrong. Right. Uh, so, I, I, but we'll see how. It so goes. we don't we we don't want independence yet. 
Like we want to keep a lid on it till we're more powerful. No, we don't want it. We, well, we, we're going to have to get some independence going. It wouldn't be the worst. So, okay. Our merchant men has arrived back in town. We mm -hmm. don't have any gold. Uh, it's 1,500. There's a fisherman waiting on the dock. Okay. We are going to bring him back with us to Nether Netherland. Okay. Steady as she goes. Okay, so they're now they're now off. They're in transit. Okay, okay. so we've got some, some more some colonists. Some fishermen. Brilliant. So that's we got perfect because we've got fish. Great. So if we... But we are going to need to build a docks in order to do that. So I'm going to start getting some lumber in order to build this docks. Mm -hmm. I've got a plan. The plan okay. is get some lumber, yeah. build the dock, yep. get the fishermen building that, and then once we've got fishermen fishing fish, mm -hmm. we can get our other colonists for them to work elsewhere. Yeah, because at the moment we've, we're like subsistence farming, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe I just want to get some ore, and then I can sell it. You sure? Don't, don't we need the dock? Yeah, but ore, you know, let's have a quick look and see. Let's have a quick look. Ore is worth four mm -hmm. to buy, which is pretty pretty decent, actually. Silver's worth 19, actually. Wow. So even if I'm only getting one silver per turn, it's that's still more, more than, than four ore. Yeah, it is, isn't it? But once I build the road, it'll be two silver per turn. Okay, I can sell the silver. I can yep. recruit some more guys. Brilliant. Like some pretty criminals or <laughs> elder statesmen. Sweet. Um, okay, this is great. This is grand. Oh. Uh, and they're, of course, coming and giving me stuff because they like me. Brilliant. Well, so what's that exclamation mark over there telling me? That means they're alarmed. Oh, they're not too happy with us. Uh, they are, I mean, it's not ideal. Let's mm. just put it that way. Uh, so I could just auto request them. Oh, that's a Spanish caravel. Right. Um, so the Spanish might be somewhere around here. Ah, oh, the road's ready. Okay, so let's convert this guy to working silver instead. So, he's, so he could do two silver, so that's... 38 instead of 5, 6 ore, which is 6 times 4. So that's 24. Yes. Yeah. So this is definitely more efficient. Right. Okay. So he's he's quite happy. He's working on mining silver. Brilliant. Um, we just leave him there, I think. And I think we're going to bring our pioneer back in. What else can he do? Well, he can plow this wetland forest, and that will give us a bit of extra food and different resources on here. Currently, that's making two furs. Mm -hmm. We could, but the thing is, if we bring him into town, he's going to need to make food. And the, the best food tile we have at the moment is a two food tile. So currently, the only value of him having him being in town is to feed himself. So, uh, so when he's out and about, he doesn't need food? No. Um, um, right, so there's no point in having him in town right now. Then. There isn't at all, no. And unfortunately, this, this is a bit of a problem in a sense because these, there's, no, there's no good food tiles here to work, really. There's all forests everywhere. No, if I we can cut a forest down. If I plow we? this, it becomes a swamp. If I plow this one, it becomes a prairie. That might be okay. So I might I might plow the prairie, plow the broadleaf forest into a prairie. Uh, mm -hmm. Wetland forest becomes marsh. Rainforest becomes swamp. Oh, mm. We are in horrible swamp bog land, aren't we? It's no good for food. I think what I might do is move him out to explore a little well, bit. Well, I think we need to get that, that fishing online then, don't we? Because does fish count as food? Or is that a separate thing? Well, do you know what, though? What I can do is I could just go and set up another settlement. No, oh, I think okay. I should probably do that. Because, see, there's lumber there, and this yeah. is also on a river. Right. This looks like a decent place to set up a second settlement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to march him out. Yeah, do a bit of exploring way. at the same time. Uh, we're going to go down here. Ooh. That is a goodie hut. Oh, okay. Now, those things can have good stuff in, Yeah. and they can have bad stuff in. Mm. Uh, the bad stuff they can have is, for example, you upset the Indians. Oh, we don't want that. And that would be bad What for kind us. of good stuff could they give us? That's an Indian there, do you see? Yeah, he's Iroquois. He's like a... Iroquois. I don't know how you pronounce it. If you can't it. tell what it looks like, that's his head there with the hat on. A little and the cherry. feather, right? He's got a cherry on top. It sort of looks like a face here, do you see? <laughs> but right. It looks like a sort of symbol, but it's actually a little Indian fella. Um, shall I go and investigate the goodie hut? Uh, sure. Oh, there's nothing but rumours. Oh. Okay, hopefully they won't be too mad at us. Yeah.